Hello and welcome. I'm excited to share with you how I paint gouache environments for my imagination. Let's get started. Right away, I start with thumbnails, or basically just little squares with different ideas about what I want to paint. These thumbnails I make from pulling from different research that I've done, whether it be through observational studies, looking at reference images, or just elements of nature that I like. Anyway, for this painting, I knew I wanted to focus on several key elements, but at this point I had no idea how I was going to connect them together. I wanted rocks, snow, and warm and cool color relationships to be a key feature. I also had an idea about adding a tree element or trees. I ended up, as I was drawing and coming up with these different little ideas, leaning away from dense foliage and closer towards um, the trees you see in winter that are basically just stalks or stumps or naked without their leaves. So I'm ultimately going to pick the thumbnail on the left hand column in the middle. I'm going to finish out these last ideas and move on and draw this on this watercolor paper. This is cold press arches. I love the tooth. It's my favorite. But when I actually start painting, since I've already planned out my values in those thumbnails, I don't really have to worry about what color I'm using right now. In fact, I'm not. All I'm worrying about is basically covering as much of the white of the paper as I can with thin washes of gouache. So it's more like painting with watercolor at this stage of the painting. In my thumbnail, I actually had the foreground much lighter than the background. And I'm going to reverse this in the painting. It's kind of one of those artistic decisions that you just have and you can change them. It's just best not to go changing them back and forth too much once you're painting. But I made this decision before I'd even put any washes down, so it's definitely going to be okay. I'm still working primarily with translucent washes. In fact, this probably is one of the longest stages for the painting, simply because I'm covering so much of the paper. I'm really not concerned at all with my light values, um, and that's one of the benefits of gouache. As an opaque medium, it differs from watercolor because of the binder that is present in its uh, makeup, whereas watercolor is mostly just made up of water and pigment. Gouache has a binder, pigment, and water. Now typically though gouache will dry lighter than it, it appears while wet, so that's one thing you, you should keep in mind as you're painting. As you can see I've actually added some opaque value because you get to a point where you need to start introducing opaques to your translucents so you can understand the relationship in the paint.
this is what I call the push and pull stage because I'm adding color, I'm adding more opaque values, but at the same time, and it's a little hard to tell with it sped up like this, I'm going with very heavily saturated brushes of water and kind of laying washes over certain areas that I've already painted. And you do have to be careful with this because with gouache, since it is a water-based medium, too much water can kind of blow out some of your sections. You can very easily ruin something that you've already painted. Um, or you can introduce too much water and create a muddy surface. But there is a certain leniency where if you let it dry and you're mindful of your water paint ratio, you can easily layer with gouache and get a more natural look. see here and I've kind of transitioned it's another working period I've taken off a lot of that blue tape since I have most of my paint of my painting on those edges kind of predetermined or already done and that's primarily because the blue painters tape I'm using can kind of make your eyes blind to certain values because it's so dark so by removing some of it I have my nice white border which allows me to really hone in on the values of this stage, which is necessary because I'm reinforcing that color relationship. I'm really some, or I should say value relationship that I had to mention in the beginning that I wanted with my darker foreground and my lighter background. And I'm building up my values here because um, gouache, as I said, does dry lighter. So more often than not, if you want a certain area darker than another, you will have to go back in for multiple passes, sometimes you can get lucky, sometimes maybe two, maybe more, to build up that value range. One of my favorite things actually about gouache is some of the edges you can get, and edges really help diversify a painting. So if you notice in the foreground, I'm trying to keep smooth edges with some of the rocks, but also add in some jagged curves. And I'll use my finger at times, actually, once I've painted, to add little kind of transitions with curves. And you don't just have to use brushes. I'll actually end up using a sponge at one point. And I will use my brush in a more unconventional way, kind of doing a splattering technique that I actually picked up from the ink work that I also do. So I'm just going to go in and continue reinforcing my values and reinforcing the opaque values that I want present in this painting. I'm going to do some more layering and build up my range and really start introducing the light values in the center of the painting. Um, I'm probably not going to talk too much. I'll come back in at the end, talk a little bit about the importance of squinting and uh, kind of one of those unique things about traditional painting that uh, digital artists, I think, have a edge on. So, uh, just enjoy.
So I wanted to add just a little note. You're going to see a splattering technique that I was talking about right after the stage where I'm adding some more cool tones for snow. I'm using my finger. Also, I rotated between using a round brush and a flat brush to kind of vary my brush marks and vary my edges. It's good to use, I wouldn't say as many tools as possible because sometimes too many tools doesn't mean that your painting is going to be a good painting. But I would say having a variety of tools and techniques can help build your history with your painting, meaning your marks and how you create your forms and shapes and values. Here's that splatter technique I was talking about. I use a muddy white on a flat brush to just kind of add a bit of a snow and also texture to the painting. Here's the finished painting. I did do one more pass off camera and afterward I've scanned it here, lowered the saturation and added a blur filter. This kind of shows the idea of like when you squint with traditional painting and it can help you see your values and feel that stronger connection. I'm just here kind of checking my work and seeing I did keep that hierarchy I wanted. I wanted the lightest values towards the background and the darkest values in the foreground. And in digital it's somewhat easier I think. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and see you again.